Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we come in this Eucharistic celebration asking our Lord Jesus Christ to nourish us, to strengthen us with his body and blood, real food and real drink that strengthens us and quenches our thirst. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacrament, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection may through the love of the Spirit ourselves rise to newness of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, may, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him that he might regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel, and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, So, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood 
remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate, and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have been hearing from this chapter <clears throat> from the Gospel of John about Jesus proclaiming himself as the bread of life. And in today's Gospel passage, the crowd, the Jews, were confused already. How is Jesus going to give us his flesh, his blood, so that we could eat and drink. Jesus explains to them that his flesh, his body, and his blood is true drink, true food for us to nourish us. Pinapaalala po sa atin at itinuturo ni Jesus sa atin ngayon na ang kanyang katawan at dugo ay talagang tunay na pagkain, tunay na inumin. Ano kaya ang nais na ituro sa atin ni Jesus dito? Nais ituro ni Jesus sa atin na tayo ay hindi mabubuhay nang wala ang kanyang katawan, nang tayo ay hindi tumatanggap ng kanyang katawan at dugo. Kaya siguro ginamit ni Jesus ang larawan ng pagkain at inumin sapagkat hindi ho tayo mabubuhay nang walang kinakain, nang walang iniinom. Diyan po nang gagaling ang lakas natin, ang buhay natin. We need to eat food, we need to drink so that we could live. This is a basic need, an essential need that we have. Food and drink. And Jesus now gives us His flesh as true food. 
His blood as true drink, reminding us that receiving the body and blood of Christ is essential as food and drink. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today, Jesus asks us to beg for this food and drink, to remind us that we will not live and our life will not be complete without receiving the body of Christ as food the blood of Christ as true drink that nourishes us. Pinapaalala po sa atin ni Jesus ngayon na tayo ay lumapit sa Kanya sapagkat hindi kumpleto ang ating buhay. Mawawalan tayo ng lakas, mawawalan tayo ng buhay kung hindi tayo tatanggap sa kanyang katawan, sa kanyang dugo, pagkain at inumin na nagbibigay buhay, nagbibigay lakas. In our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear the story of Saul. And in his experience of being blind, of not seeing anything, he was riding on his horse. He was a powerful man, a man of authority who can order people to be imprisoned and to be killed as we have seen in the story of Stephen and the other early Christians that were persecuted. Saul was very dependent on the power and authority vested on him. But Jesus let him experience blindness, falling from his horse, and experiencing that he cannot trust himself he cannot trust his own power and authority. He was stripped of everything, even his sight. And now, he needs one who could regain his strength, his sight, his life. And that is Jesus. He needed Jesus at the lowest moment of his life. When he was stripped of every power, of every authority, of every pretense that he has in his own life, even his sight was taken from him so that he would realize in the end the most basic need that I have to survive is none other than Jesus. Sa karanasan ni Saul na nawala ang kanyang paningin, nawala ang kanyang kapangyarihan, nahulog siya sa kanyang kapangyarihan at otoridad. Doon niya nalaman at napagtanto na si Jesus ang kailangan natin. Jesus is our basic need, our food, our drink to strengthen us. We do not need authority. We do not need power. We do not need self-righteousness. We only need Jesus for us to survive, for us to live, for us to have strength for us to have nourishment. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this Eucharist, and many of us are celebrating this Eucharist online, many of us are already hungry
to receive Jesus in the sacrament of the Eucharist, the bread of life. But at the moment, as you are celebrating with us in this Eucharist through online streaming, Jesus is still nourishing you with His body, with His blood, spiritually. And He is also nourishing you with His Word that you receive in your heart. Let us be able to say to Jesus today, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. You are my basic need. I need your body. I need your blood so that I could live, so that I could have the strength to face this new day. I could have the strength to face all the challenges today because I know that your body is food that will nourish me, that will strengthen me, that will give me life every day. In this Eucharist, Jesus gives you his body so that you may have life and strength. Amen. The Father gives His own Son as real food and real drink at this altar. We can ask Him for all our needs in Christ, the source of life. For every petition, let us say, Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. That the Church may grow in appreciation of the Eucharist as the bread of life by celebrating the sacrifice of the Mass with greater devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father sustain, sustain our, our lives, lives through, through the, the Eucharist. Eucharist. That as a community, we may not be idle in our life of faith, but every day seek God even in our difficulties and sufferings. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father sustain, sustain our, our lives through, through the Eucharist. Eucharist. That families, especially our children, may grow in the ways of grace through the constant reception of the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father sustain, sustain our, our lives through, through the, the Eucharist. Eucharist. That the sick may be strengthened in their faith by uniting their sufferings with the suffering of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father sustain, sustain our, our lives through, through the, the Eucharist, Eucharist, that our beloved dead may have the eternal life promised by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father sustain, sustain our, our lives through, through the, the Eucharist. Eucharist. Heavenly Father, you gave us the body and blood of your Son as food and drink for our journey. Grant that through our union with Him, we may be united with one another as members of His body. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of Him may bring us growth 
in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Metale, Alleluia. We are the Portale, Alleluia. The Surrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia.